Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, still a uh, continuing conversation here. Uh, so much more that we have to share with you and to discuss this morning. But first of all, let's talk about uh, the 11th of November. And um, today is uh, officially the day where World War I ended. It is uh, described as the worst war that the world has ever seen. Uh, it lasted for four years. Um, I, I, I can't imagine what the carnage must have been like in those four years. But it is, of course, uh, from uh, 1914 to 1918, uh, the 11th of November. And of course, if you also look back at what caused uh, World War I, it was uh, because of the murder of a person called Franz Ferdinand. Um, right after his death, of course, there were alliances left and right, and uh, a lot of countries came together, and um, the war started. Um, so something that I would also uh, throw in is... Um, it has. It probably caused the worst carnage in the history of wars, uh, with uh, close to 20 million people that died, uh, and about 9 million civilian, or oh, sorry, um, uh, military deaths, and about 13 million civilian deaths. But right after the war was when the more of the, the numbers uh, that um, eventually passed on as casualties from the war, 17 to 100 million people died from the Spanish flu that uh, came as a result of the war. Yeah, um, uh, the, the thing for me, the takeaway for me when I was reading the, um, the day, World War I, was the conversations around the quest for power and influence. I think that was one of the uh, driving forces of that war. And cent centuries, uh, should I say, centenary down the line, we still have, you know, the quest for power and influence dominating our politics. How we are going about it now is a bit, I wouldn't say it's a bit more cautious because we still have wars in different countries of the world. Absolutely. And, you know, I kept thinking, how can we, you know, manage this quest, this insatiable taste for power and influence to the detriment of others. We talk about living in an equal society. And then I think about it. If we are talking about living in, in an equal society where we still have inequality, one of the push for that, uh, for, I mean, the derivation from that war was enhancing democracy, really. Has it been enhanced? You know, well, these are things that play in my mind. This time I look at it, some of the, did we learn any lessons from World War One? What, I mean. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know if we learned any lessons, you know, but a lot of treaties were signed after World War I. Um, um, some of the tre treaties eventually um, led to World War II, but uh, those treaties were peace treaties, there were agreements, of course. And one of the things that led to the end of World War I, and this is, is the funny part, was not because anybody was conquered per se, it was because the carnage that was experienced in the wars, a lot of countries just realized that so many people had been killed, the destruction was mind-blowing, and so they all just decided, it's probably time to end this war. Um, yes, you know, some countries might feel like they won, uh, some, you know, alliances may feel like they won, but the main reason why the war ended was because of the amount of death that was experienced in the war. The civilian casualties were way more than the military casualties, and yeah, they uh, just uh, had to call it. Yeah, call it uh, another thing from that war was the emergence of the Americans as, the, you know, taking that uh, global um, responsibility to sort of restore peace. You know, they did it for a while, backed out, came back again. And since then, they've been, um, you know, in the fore trying to ensure that there is, you see them, you know, taking part in some of these uh, countries where there is conflict. And they yes. play part in trying to resolve some of these uh, conflicts as well. Um, some persons will argue that um, as time goes on, someone else is going to take over that sport from America. But I've not we'll seen see. it yet. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so today again, um, an offshoot from what happened we discussed yesterday, and that's the uh, killing of uh, Ken Sarowiwa, um, the environmental activist. Today, Nigeria was officially banned um, from Commonwealth. the Commonwealth. The, the conversation around, you know, the sanction, when I was reading how everything played out, I, I was thinking that, Personal and selfish interest, country will always come first in certain instances. The U.S. has said they were willing to go ahead. And the oil embargo 
that part was not, well, UK tried it. They only have 1% um, uh, interest here in Nigeria, and they also have uh, punishment for it if Nigeria chose to react. But the other parts of the world, the UN was supposed to come in, and then US also said, if China doesn't come in, they will not take part in placing an oil sales embargo on Nigeria. Oh, and that's how that part of that embargo didn't come uh, to play. So punitive, yes, there were other sanctions like the EU um, um, coming up to say that there will not be some, uh, let me see if I have that here, there will not be some sort of uh, business uh, with Nigeria. There was uh, a blockade from the EU um, on this one. But again, it <laughs> brings to fore the need for us to um, look for solutions within ourselves, try and manage our situation and allow for freedom of expression. There wasn't really much for me as per sanctions for the killing of Ken Salim. Yeah, and, and, and if you look at the, uh, it's called the Harare Treaty or Harare uh, Commonwealth Declaration in 1991, and that's where Nigeria was uh, 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 banned from. Um, and it only lasted for about three years plus. Um, it, uh, it was signed on the 20th of October 1991. Some of the things that it mentioned or it spoke about were the belief in global peace and order, uh, liberty of the individual under the law, equal rights for all citizens, you know, and a couple of other things. There's 53 member states. Um, uh, people have questioned, you know, what, you know, how did Nigeria suffer from being taken out of the Commonwealth? And you can't really pinpoint a lot of things that, you know, were uh, huge damages uh, to our economy. It was a lot of But something that I will mention, because you, you just, you were speaking about, you know, how the U.S. and the U.K., you know, are placing embargoes or, or talking about placing embargoes and, and stepping in here and there. One of the factors that played in the execution and the charges that were uh, brought against Ken Saruwan, you know, the, the other nine, there's a company, I would maybe not mention their name, but there's an oil company that... Shell. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's, still, it's still accusations, but there's a narrative that Shell played a very, very huge role in getting Ken Saruwa to be um, shot up. Um, and a lot of the, the aspects, there's someone, someone's, I can't remember his name now, so there's a Connell Paul something, um, I don't want to get the wrong name, but there's a Connell Paul that also confessed during the interrogation and during that process that he was paid by Shell to cause chaos in Ogoni land. And it was yeah, that, well, it was those that are chaos. on the realms of accusation so, so, so until there is. Why I'm bringing this like, up, why yes. I'm bringing this up is because if you want countries to take responsibility and, you know, they are acting like they're placing embargo um, on Nigeria. One of the companies that is a major factor in all of this conversation and the death of Ken Saruwa is a company from one of those countries. So they could have stepped in a lot earlier. Their interest a lot of times is in what they can get out of you as a country, not about that. So let's, 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 let's take world powers away and come to Africa. You know that the, the push for this uh, sanction um, from, I mean, the ban from Commonwealth was spearheaded by the then South African president, Nelson Mandela. And then he, at some point, became isolated because not everybody, this thing called oil, it's our, say, um, how do I call it now? Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the adjective to describe it, whether it's a win or a loss for us, because it still seems to be at the middle of every conversation. Nelson Mandela tried, but at some point, even his deputy was no longer in support uh, of him. So Nigeria over the years has, um, has um, shown itself to not, even in a democracy, following the law proper um, adhering to the laws when it comes to human rights enforcement. They don't do that. So let me quickly look at some of the uh, words from the uh, U.S. Special Envoy to Nigeria at the time who tried to get access to but Again, it brings to the conversation psychophants surrounding people in power that insulates them from actually getting a feel of what is going on in the country. It didn't start today. Probably will never it's end. Been there, but yes. he, he did say something that um, I would like to repeat here for emphasis sake. Uh, he described uh, the trial that led to the conviction and killing of Ken Sarawiwa as a fraudulent trial. He also said it was um, a judicial murder, not my words, but that of the uh, US uh, special envoy to Nigeria at the time. 
after every effort to get in touch with uh, Sania Bacha. Um, was Two things I'd also throw in before we um, jump out of uh, this conversation is um, are the first one is Ken Sarua also wasn't given a chance to appeal. Yes. He wasn't given the opportunity to appeal yes. that I, I um, guess death about uh, that. Yes, uh, yeah. um, sentence. And the second one is there's a couple of people who were a part of that trial and a part of that whole process that led to his execution that are in government today. Um, they are still holding huge positions in government today. There's people who defended his execution that are still in government today. I wouldn't mention names. Uh, there's some of them that are um, heads of major um, ministries and agencies in the country today. Um, and it's one of the things that we've always, that I have always um, heard about how our country rewards bad behavior sometimes. Um, yes, you know, we, we probably should, you know, let them, you know, get fair, fair hearing and all of that. But there are certain people, and it's all, even if you look at the NSAS uh, protest, some of the people that were mentioned as have committed, allegedly committed, uh, committed huge atrocities um, against human, uh, human beings in Nigeria are holding government posi positions today. They are CSOs to governors. I, I guess they are in, in, in government houses. You know. I guess we'll just sort of wrap up this conversation by uh, reiterating the call that has been put forward about people who are abreast of the historical detail. Because what we did is just uh, touching, skimming things on the, on the surface. Right? The people that actually have been part of this process have come out to say Ken Sarawua deserve uh, an apology, uh, apology posthumous pardon, some sort of recognition. Um, he was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, but I, I don't think uh, he got it. Uh, that main nomination alone tells you that where the world puts uh, Ken Sarawiwa, um, it might seem like a little thing, but Amsterdam, Amsterdam, not Nigeria, named the street after, after Ken uh, Sarawiwa as well. So it's just amazing that we don't seem to uh, celebrate our own until someone else celebrates us and then we begin to, you, you see, you saw what happened with the U.S. election. Yes. Some of us, did we even know that these people existed until they came until out? Until they won, apply, And then really. we started celebrating them. But the people that are here and working their, you know, um, <laughs> I know the word you were about to use. <laughs> uh, working hard and that doesn't seem to get any sort of recognition. So we'll just um, wrap this up now. Today in history, interesting. There are lots of other things that happen today in history. If you want to go check them out, uh, we'll try and bring you uh, more uh, instead of just one or two uh, on a daily basis. Hello. I'm going to bring Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.